Hey Gators, welcome back to the Chomp Pod. My name is Katia Noriega and I'm a staff reporter for Golden Gate Express. Today I'll be joined by the De Leon sisters to discuss their tie for seventh place all time in softball program history with 44 stolen bases each and more about their individual softball experience at SF State. Let's get started. Okay, well, first, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having us. Together. <laughs> um, I feel like it's going to be an interesting one, so let's get started. <laughs> so first one, I just want to, I guess, reiterate the reason why I wanted to invite you guys um, is because you guys both reached, like, the seventh all-time of stolen bases in the program, and I think that's incredible. Like, congrats to you, too. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> so can you guys tell me more about that and, like, how... Like, what's your mentality when you're on base and you're like, I got to, you know, advance and stuff? Like, tell me more about that. Um, I think so freshman year, obviously, I got to play with her and, you know, batting in a area where, you know, all I had to do was get on and like be moved by her because all she can all the top of the lineup can hit. So there's really no point of me stealing because I knew I was going to score no matter what. But I think after she left and, you know, I took the role of, like, being the lead off, getting on and trying to create havoc, it was more of, like, I got to get there. Like, mm -hmm. I have to, you know, beat them out or I have to get to the next bag because it's the best thing for the team. And I knew that whoever was behind me, they were going to, you know, get me all the way home, even if I just moved to one bag. So I think that was my mentality in the entire time. Sometimes I will get a little nervous. Sometimes when my coach tells me, like, oh, you're stealing, I'm like, are you sure? Like, are, are you sure you're giving me the right sign at this moment? But yeah. Yeah, I had the same mentality uh, when I played here. Um, but literally, I had amazing teammates that I knew that they were going to hit me in anyways. But honestly, my senior year, I was kind of tired, not going to lie. I did not like running the bases. I've always wanted to like Nope, I told coach I'm not going to go anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I think I we have the same mentality. Like our coaches believe in us that we can do, we can steal bases, we can get the job done. So yeah. <laughs> okay. And I know you guys are like three or so years apart. Yeah, we're yeah, three yeah. years apart. So was there like, I don't know, I guess a conversation between you two where you're like, oh, we're going to be quick. Or, like this year, we're going to be, you know, we're going to, run more laps and just get quicker so we can steal a base you know um <laughs> like, I think that we both knew like we both have different things to offer to the team and kind of looking at each other like with our strengths um it wasn't more of like we have to do this like that's our job it was more of like we're gonna do what we know how to do right. and um think about like we have our own skills like she is a great hitter and you know we both agree like defensively like that's where I kind of like you know let loose and that's where I kind of am more confident so just going off of um what we already know how to do it wasn't more of like a we have to do this we already know what to do mm -hmm. yeah. yeah um so tell me more about you guys being on the same team as a state for like a year I know that overlapping can be like kind of exciting so tell me more about like your experience and like any memories that you guys can recall oh um well uh, this wasn't our first time that we got to play with each other. Mm -hmm. We've been playing uh, with each other since about eight, nine years old. So it was honestly like having my sister with me on the on the field. It was like a special moment for me. Um, but through high school, I played with her my senior year and she was a freshman. So it was kind of like doing it all over again. But um, we knew each other. Um, very well we knew what we were gonna do um, before it even started um, but I think my favorite memory was uh, with her was our last game and she we both got the last play of the game which ended my career <laughs> but uh, yeah playing with her it's just a special moment being with not only your sister but having like your best friend on the field mm -hmm. Um, um, that was definitely my favorite moment as well. I think right before that last inning, I told her, I was like, we have to hug. Like there's, <laughs> we're not going off the field without hugging. And yeah. it was just like that moment. Cause we're not, we're not the type of like, you know, we don't hug no, a lot, <laughs> but that moment I was like, 
this is it. Like, that's the last moment I'm going to have with my sister. That's the last moment I'm going to, you know, call her my teammate. But, you know, with her guidance and her being by my side throughout, you know, my high school experience and my college experience, I got to watch her and develop into such a leader that I looked up to. And, you know, she obviously guided me, you know, sometimes she was a little hard to, you know, be with every day. But I think she really kept it balanced where I was like, I, I'm here doing what I love. And especially with, you know, my best friend, my sister. So it was like, it, you, you get to continue on playing with like, you know, a little bit more passion, a little bit more heart. Yeah, I, I know you <laughs> kind of mentioned and touched on the topic that she's kind of like, I guess, helped you in ways like, you know, here and there. Um, what's one way that you think she's like influenced you to either get better at your game or like any just little tips that she's might influence you on? I think my sister isn't really afraid to try new things. I think she's very much like she's the type of person to like learn and do. And that's something that I attach to as well. I, you know, I can learn really fast and I can, you know, lead by example. But that's all that comes from her watching her every day. So I think she really has guided me to like be where I am right now. She like everything she's done on and off the field, like, you know, it's just, like that's the type of person you want to be. Like that's the type of person you want to see. So that's where I got my mentality for the next couple of years that I have underneath my belt. And from your perspective, how was it like seeing her grow and what were some things where you're like, hey, like let's, you know, get something else going or I don't know. Like Yeah, I'm like really super proud of her. <laughs> But when she told me that we had the same record for stolen bases, I was like, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of like jealous, but <laughs> I'm really super proud that she got to that point. She made a, basically a legacy and beating records um, here and there, batting, being a great, a great leader on the field um, since being um, on the sidelines and watching from a different perspective. I'm super proud of what she's accomplished, um, whether it's academically or athletically on the field. So getting the chance to watch her every step I can take, um, she's been, I've been super proud of her. So <laughs> yeah. um, I know you also talk, touched on this too. You guys are segueing <laughs> to every question I got, but um, you said there was like a little bit of jealousy. I know you're proud of her, but was there any kind of like sister rivalry or was there anything? Like um, I mean, we're very competitive uh growing up we like to one-up each other but at this point like she made uh, she made something of her own mm -hmm. she didn't have to have my help to do that so I'm really super proud no matter what uh whether I'm jealous or not but <laughs> um but yeah she is she's doing what she did she is doing what she knows how to do and um I'm really like just proud honestly um having like me as a big sister looking looking down on my sister so yeah. I think also I don't think she gives her enough credit but she <laughs> did have two years like two more years underneath her belt mm -hmm. but she decided you know to graduate so it could have been like us still competing <laughs> right now at this point in time but you know what her she wanted to you know finish college she wanted to you know continue with her life and you know we could still be competing, <laughs> but even though coach brings that up all the time, like my sister still could have been here. Mm -hmm. Wait, did you graduate early or? So uh, COVID year, um, I still had two years under my belt to play with her. But since it was my senior year, technically for school, right. I was kind of done. I think my body was just like, no, nah, I don't mm -hmm. think you can do this anymore. But um, I wanted to end my career no matter what with my sister. I wanted to feel like I accomplished something. So I think that's when um, I told my teammates and my coach, like, I think like my time here is is good. I'm setting like a good example and I'm leaving them with great players, such as my sister um, and having them like compete throughout the season was really well. Yeah. So you... You guys have been playing since, you know, you were little kids. Mm -hmm. Did you guys, like, always imagine you guys playing ever since then until college? Like, was that always something you guys had in mind? Or uh, how did you guys feel once it was, like, finally over? Um, Personally, we did a lot of sports growing up. Like, we played, what, like, maybe five sports at a time. So once we reached 
I think very young age, once you read like 12 or heard 12 you like at time, like our dad told us, like you only had to pick one sport. <laughs> and, you know, softball wasn't my passion at the time. I wanted to dance. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to be a dancer, but you know, honestly, going out every day with my dad and my sister practicing every day, you know, you just kind of, you know, it kind of grows on you, kind of like builds you up a little bit more. Yeah. And getting to compete with her is like really fun. Like I can't compete, you know, dancing with her. Like <laughs> that wouldn't be very fun for her. But <laughs> she's a better dancer. Who? Oh, that'd, that'd be all me right here. <laughs> I'm not good. With that. <laughs> but no, we we have our different skills, but definitely the times that we shared when we were younger, growing up, it was just it was fun. And that's what made it kind of stick with us a little bit more is because we had fun. We f we played each game together, even though I was three years younger than her playing on the same team. I know she probably hated it because I would always be there in the uniform. Probably wouldn't play that weekend, <laughs> but I was still there with her. So it just kind of we kind of just went with it, I guess. Yeah, I remember from our interview for your story, um, like you mentioned right now that your coach said that you would you, you would be on the sidelines still cheering on or whatever, even if you weren't um, yes. in the lineup or whatever. Why was that something that you were coming used to? Like you just wanted to be like her support or you just wanted to just get engaged somehow? I think everybody wants to see their siblings succeed. And, you know, I wanted to see it more because she put everything into softball. We sacrificed our weekends. Like, you know, we didn't have very – very many friend groups that <laughs> stuck around because we were so busy. So getting her to sacrifice her weekends or her time being uh, for her high school like year, it was just amazing to be like, I want to cheer on. I want her to do more. I want her, you know, to get every award that possible. And I always went to our games. Like there was not a time where my mom left without me, without me jumping in the car and be like, let's go watch my sister for the weekend. So it was really fun to like see her always record her, you know, be there for her successes. So that's where I wanted to be. Yeah. From your perspective, how does that feel like having your sister always there and you're just trying to focus on maybe yeah. feeling in the bag? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Having like my support system being there for me through my senior year, I was honestly frustrated once uh, time to time making plays, trying to uh, make something happen. But I can always count on her trying to pick me, pick me up and trying to calm me down instead of uh, getting so frustrated on the field. So but having that support system, not a lot of uh, siblings get to play with their sister or their brother. So it was just it was just like easy going to have someone be there no matter what. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how does it feel now that she's graduated and now you're here on the team by yourself? Is there any like moments that you miss or maybe she's on the sideline cheering for you? <laughs> oh, definitely. I think my support system here every day, like she made a big impact freshman year, obviously being here, getting to go to her, her apartment every night, mm -hmm. kind of just to annoy her and just be like always with her. Um, but right now, I think my sister is such a big supporter. Like she takes pictures for our um, team and she's always there like no matter what she's always there she's still in the dugout like <laughs> that's what made me laugh the first time she came out with her camera uh, last year is like she was still there no matter where I went she was still there um she always wanted to talk about the game you know when you know I don't do my best we have a point in time where you know we don't talk about it like we just move on the next the next game will come, the next day will come. But then there's some times where I ask for opinions. I ask for opinions a lot about hitting, about defense. Like, what could I, what could I have done to do better in that situation and stuff like that? And she always, you know, tells me with the, the truth and being brutally honest, like, <laughs> you should have done this or maybe you should have thought of about this situation a little bit more before, you know, stepping right in. So she always has me on my toes. And it's great to, you know, come to a side who's a person not on the team, who's not your coach, but just to give you, like, brutally advice because, you know, nothing's better than having it come from your sister. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if you've mentioned this before, but was it your dad or someone from your family encouraging you guys to continue playing softball? Or how did that start from a younger age? Like, who introduced you guys? Yeah, I think it was both of our parents. Um they didn't play like baseball or softball, but um, my our dad wanted to have us be like physically active. 
So we were in like soccer, um, indoor and outdoor. We were in basketball. Um, and we were in so many, but we just we just fell in love with softball of how it came to be. Because uh, there's not a lot of people that talk about it and think that it's super easy. But um, over time, I think our dad and our parents was just our number one um, supporters in this uh, game because our dad uh, still coaches to this day, but has taught uh, us a lot about the game of softball and being there for us, trying to um, trying to keep us working and improving our skills, whether it was hitting or defensively. Yeah, I think that he stayed up most nights, you know, thinking of different scenarios and also learning from our coach, um, Coach Lily Sharid, her, her dad, um, learning from him because he was a coach as well and grasping everything that he wanted to know or wanted to know more about the game and kind of putting it towards us. So he spent a lot of restless nights like thinking of different things for us to do. Um, I think it was so funny because we were talking about it a couple of weeks ago where we would always come home after school after a long day and he would open the door and be like, go grab some socks. And we're like, why? <laughs> and we would come out in the garage and it's like the bow net was set up. Oh. The pitching mat was out. Like we were, we would it was hit until like we were like for 11. like two hours. <laughs> yeah. We were okay, we were yeah. And yeah. you know, it was just not like the time of like, it was like a routine. It was just more of like, if you want to do it, like we're going to go do it outside. He wanted us to practice every day. Like there was no day of rest for us. So if we weren't pitching or hitting in the garage, in the morning after church, we would go to the field. Like, <laughs> it was just on and on. And my mom was there for every step of the way, even though she thought it was like too much. You know, she was still supportive. She was still, you know, being there. She's she's definitely our number one supporter. I'd say <laughs> if you don't hear her on the live stream screaming, she's at home screaming as well. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> That's interesting. So he was like pushing you guys since the moment you woke up or even late at night to make you guys get better at your swing or whatever it is the pitching anything yeah he would take anything so if you see us like laying on the couch oh no we got to go practice <laughs> I was like oh okay a 10 year old doesn't really <laughs> like to practice yeah. every day but <laughs> I think with that push from our parents it really like we want to be here without them so yeah. it was really it was really motivating trying to keep going and trying to work hard, not only for ourselves, but for them as well. Mm -hmm. So how has that like impacted you guys' skills then? Uh, did they work or do you feel like um, you're appreciative now or whatever? Like what was, what's your opinion about it now? <laughs> I'm very appreciative for my parents. Like if it obviously, as she said, like if it wasn't for him pushing every day for us to get better, like, I don't think we would be still playing softball. I think we would all have been playing a different sport at this point if they weren't so passionate. And I think their passion that they showed about the game and about us kind of relayed to, like, what we want to do now. Like, we're passionate. I want to make them proud. Like, I think every series – I always say this to, like, my friend, but – Every series, I want to go, like, I want to make sure I see my parents before the game starts. Like, I have to know, like, they're here so that, like, my game will be, like, really good. Because if I'm not, if they're not in the stands, you know, it's just like, are they watching? Like, mm -hmm. are they watching me? Or because, you know, they just, whenever I see them, it just makes the game, like, a little bit fun or better because I'm more relaxed when I see my parents. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Did you, have you been going to all her games, like, consistently? Or yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I try to make it every, trying to make it every series, but I can't really travel when they go to San Diego. Mm -hmm. So, but I, same thing as my mom does, we try to watch on the go live to make sure that she's doing well. Mm -hmm. And also we, after her games, we also text her like, well, good luck, make us proud or for me, I would like to give her advice, <laughs> but um, I always try to make sure that I always let her know I'm watching no matter what, no matter where I am. Is there anything that you would want to tell her for her last season or so? Like, how would you describe something that you would want to like pitch to her right now? Like, oh, you know, oh. Any, you want to give her advice. <laughs> I'm going to give you the advice. <laughs> um. Coming down to 
her last season, I would just say make every game count or just relax. Mm -hmm. You get out, you get out. Because I started to realize that my career was going to end soon. And I started to be like, oh, my gosh, like I'm going to be an adult pretty soon. Yeah. I'm going to start paying bills. Yeah. I'm not going to be a kid anymore. But I would just say, like, make every game like it's your last have fun and stop stressing over the small things because there's a lot of stress about and you're just playing a game which just having fun and being with your teammates it's what's the memories makes it counts so mm -hmm. I think like um uh, my last season I had two of my best friends and we would always make memories whether it was on long trips or long plane rides um we would always get like starbucks before every game so it's just the small memories just to my try to make it count and not think about what's in the future so that's probably my advice to her is just have fun no matter what the outcome is of how your at bats go or how how the game goes just make it fun mm -hmm. have, have fun in the dugout <laughs> Is there any particular me memory that you guys have while being on the road? Like, is there any, you know, moment where you guys would uh, <laughs> um, think about this? <laughs> I think one of mine would be, I'm not the best traveler. I get motion sickness a lot. I like, I'm probably like the worst person you can have a travel oh, with. Damn. Like I complain <laughs> about everything. Like if something doesn't go right, I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> but I think it was like, I don't know where we landed. I think it was San Bern or San Marcos, like uh, we were yeah. going to. And I completely got so sick. I was, you know, laying out in the airport <laughs> on the ground. Like, I think those that, that was the moment I was like, maybe this is not for me. Like, I don't know how I can handle three more, three more years of this. But, you know, telling her telling me, yelling at me, like, what did you eat kind of thing? <laughs> it was like, I didn't eat anything. Like, I'm just the plane was like, like turbulence was bad. <laughs> And she's just like, like yelling at me is my fault. I was like, I can't do much. <laughs> yeah, I think my favorite memory was every time we got to travel, we would always go to Target with our group friend groups. Oh, we would tradition. always, yes, we would always buy like the, what's it called? Like the Disney. Oh, the, the uh, mystery box. So, yeah, oh. we always buy those or we would always buy a new Squishmallow everywhere oh. we go. And it was just funny because our coach caught us in the elevator and she was like, you really spent your <laughs> money on that? I was like, yeah, you were supposed to know about it. <laughs> but I think it was just going to Target, having fun, like buying little stuff. <laughs> it was fun. So <laughs> do you guys have that as a souvenir? Do you guys still have those things? I actually do. Yeah. <laughs> we came back. I got a new pair of sunglasses, a big giant dog squishmallow. I still have that. And we always buy the same thing. So we always have like different colors. Mm -hmm. I think our friend group got all like the same glasses, but different colors. Oh, yes. <laughs> I still have them. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Um, well, I think we're going to head on to the last question. Yeah. But what is something that you have in your skill set that you might see from her like is there something that you see in yourself that is kind of repeated from her skills or something and is there anything that other players might catch you guys doing something similar like oh you guys have the same swing or like something like that uh i feel like her our swing is very different she starts her, yeah yeah her positioning is <laughs> very different from mine but i'm still i feel like my swing has changed over the years obviously with her help but I think defensively, I think the since I started at shortstop and I moved to second last year and this year, I think the plays that I made, it's just like you could see the videos of like us making the same plays. Like you can't even tell like the difference. So I think for our, you know, defensively, I think we do look the same in <laughs> making plays. But hitting, I think we're very different. She has a little bit more power than I do. <laughs> I think a little bit more home runs underneath her belt. <laughs> Oh, I gotta hit it far since I don't want to run that much. So, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, I we always get it a lot that we're twins, mm -hmm. um, especially from different teams as well, because we would all they would always get us mixed up, or say like, oh, the twin sisters are up to bat, or like, uh, we're not that we're not twins, we're three years <laughs> apart. Yeah. Right. But uh, I think 
a lot of our teammates um, in the beginning would mess up our names, either on purpose or accident, mm. uh, which we don't really like. <laughs> but I was like, I don't see us being twins. Mm -hmm. I mean, like same height, she got a little taller. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's just funny to hear how different teams in our league say like, oh my gosh, you guys are sisters. How does it feel? Or like, oh, you guys are twins. Mm -hmm. Do you guys get mixed up a lot? I'm like, no, I'm three years older. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that was that was a memory too. Mm -hmm. And then seeing around campus, they always see us and think we're twins. So mm -hmm. <laughs> we get it everywhere. <laughs> I could see it, but I could see it. Yeah. <laughs> I could see a little, a little different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all right, well, I think that's it. So right. thank you guys so much for joining. Thank us. you for having us. Yeah, yeah thanks fun. for having us. We did, we did. <laughs> this has been Katya Noriega for Gold Ticket Express. Thank you for listening.